Uh, we want to talk about the Milwaukee Bucks. Not so much the short-term picture, but the long-term picture for this franchise and the future of Giannis's position with the Bucks. So, I mean, leading into the season, the Bucks were one of the biggest stories. They were one of the most fancied bolters in the East on the back of largely the Greek freak. They were supposed to soar up the standings. They were going to genuinely contend this year. They were going to be up there with the Cavs, the Celtics, the Raptors. Unfortunately for Jason Kidd and his job and Giannis and the future of the franchise, that hasn't panned out. Currently, they sit 37 and 32, and they're seventh in the East, which just a half a game behind the Heat in the eighth seed. Now, thanks to Detroit, there's no problem that they're not going to make the playoffs. How did your prediction of the Pistons beating the Jazz go, Jared? But, But... in saying that, this has not been the season that they predicted, not been the season we predicted, and a lot of it was compounded by, I mean, their loss to Orlando last Thursday was just kind of the exclamation point on the lacklustre season they've had. Yep, definitely. And it's it's something that you look, uh, everyone looks at this team on paper the last couple of seasons and you see Giannis, obviously, but then uh, yeah, the other wings, guys like year. Chris Middleton yeah. and Jabari Parker. Malcolm Brogdon hasn't been too impressive yeah. in his second season. They did bring in Bledsoe, yeah. um, and he, he was a very good player. But then what do they do at centre? They've yeah. got Thon Maker. I don't even know who else mm. is playing centre for them. Well, Henson. Henson's yeah. the main one, but Henson's been really disappointing. I mean, he's getting 25 minutes a night, but he's averaging under nine points, only seven boards. 1.4 blocks, and he can't space the floor, which we'll get to later talking about how you actually build around these unicorns and who is the right player for it. Yeah. But, I mean, to pardon the pun, but really the buck starts and stops with Giannis for Milwaukee. Like, yeah. it's yeah. that simple. I mean, just take that Orlando mm-hmm. game, for, for instance. I mean, they gave up, just to add perspective to it, if you don't know, Orlando's trying to lose... That's just yeah. a common, yeah, commonly accepted fact right now. On top of that, that game, they'd flown in at around 2 a.m. in the morning. They'd just got back from a 10-day road trip where they went 0-5, and the day before they got smacked by the Spurs, and they let this Orlando Magic team put up 126 points on them, and they let Jonathan Simmons and DJ Augustine each drop 30-plus on them. It's poor. Yeah, it's it's really, really poor. And Giannis, in that loss, had 38 points and 10 boards. He always shows up, but it's the rest. Do you want to hear? This is is quite possibly the best stat of a thing I've ever heard. When he was off the floor in that game, the Bucks were minus 94 points per 100 possessions. Oh, that is... Minus 94 points (laughs) per 100 possessions. Yeah, that, that needs some serious, serious help. And, I mean, we know that Jason Kidd, obviously this issue cost him his job. He led the Cav- He led the Cavs. He led the Bucks. And look who has arrived Hello. to the studio. Welcome, Jed. We can bring our SOS call back. We no longer need you to go out and find <laughs> Jed. We have found him. He's in the studio. And we are talking about the Bucks. He's got, oh, no. He's got the uh, Richmond jersey, so yes, tune into the Don't Argue podcast to hear him. Him and Chris absolutely lose their minds <laughs> over, over Richmond season, but we're talking about the Bucks. So back to the Bucks and Jason Kidd, who lost his job in January. At that point, the Bucks were twenty three and twenty two. They didn't hire a new coach. They went with Joe Prunty, who was the assistant coach. It's, they a, actually, tough, it's a tough sell mid-season to bring in a yeah. full-time head coach. Yeah. Mm. And, I mean, on top of that, they actually, when they changed their coach, they went like five and zip or four and zip yeah. to start with. But we talked about that with the Cavs last week, how there's that yeah, burst there's always enthusiasm. That period. But they're falling back. I mean, they're 14 and 10 under Prunty. I think it's interesting. I mean, under Kidd. So the stretch under Kid this season they had a bottom six defensive rating, but a top eight offensive rating. Under Prunty, they have a top eight defense, but the offense has dropped back to fifteenth. So it's that trying to find the balance in the middle. And the problem a lot of the problem was surrounding the defense because Jason Kidd had an unconventional style of blitzing a lot, and it resulted in generally people being way out of position. And I mean they are 
if you just look at their numbers, they couldn't defend the three ball at all, which was largely due to the fact that they blitzed everything. They got wide open corner threes. They were always ball movement is able to open up the Bucks defense quite easily. They take the third fewest threes, which is obviously not not how the modern game and successful game has been played. They're the worst rebounding team in the league, and under Prunty, they allow the fifth most points in the paint. So they're not defending the three ball well, they're allowing points in the paint, they're not rebounding, and they're not shooting threes, which is generally, if we look at the Warriors, Houston, even how the Raptors have become successful is because they've embraced the three ball and it's surprising for a team that is built around their length, their size. Yeah, to be you see the similarity with the Warriors, with players like Iguodala and Durant. They love the three ball. They love playing defense. They don't love it, but they're great at it. So it's weird how it doesn't translate all the time. Yep. Unfortunately for the Bucks, they don't have the likes of KD and whatnot to go behind yes. Giannis. Well, Giannis is... So, I mean, if we just look at their supporting cast, because as we talked about, Giannis's numbers are incredible. He's averaging 27 points per game, 10 boards, 5 assists, 1.4 blocks, 1.5 steals over the year. It This cannot be pinned on any way on Giannis. I mean, he's still developing his jump shot, but he's shown that he can hit that, that 15 to 20 foot jump shot probably 20 is a bit of bit generous yeah. but around that 15 foot jump shot so it's a supporting cast is the real question for the bucks front office how they build around him i mean we've got chris middleton who is probably the most unknown 20 points per game scorer in the league no yeah like that that's a genuinely high number like there's not many people in the league i'd say it's probably only my guess would be about 25 people in the league who scored 20-plus points yeah, per game. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, as I said, he's at exactly 20, so he's at that bottom echelon of those. But that's still still an impressive feat. And he's shooting 35% from three. As we talked about Henson earlier, who's been disappointing, and he's on $10 million a season, so they'd probably expect more out of him. I think Henson, Delhi, and Snell are 29 mil a year next year which is probably too much for those guys. Yeah, Yeah. it's probably too much. Thon Maker, I really want him to be good because of the Aussie connection. But right now, I mean, his numbers have doubled from his rookie year in terms of his minutes played per game. So he's getting the opportunity. But we're talking about like 4.8 points per game, three rebounds. We always knew he was going to be incredibly raw. And he's probably still three or four years off finding any potential that he has. But right now... He's not looking as sparkling as he once did in terms of his potential. Yeah, he's really testing like, yeah. how the patience far, yeah, factor. The, which, do you stick by him? Like you could get what like a serviceable starter, or you could yeah. just get that stock standard role player out of him. Yeah, and then obviously we know they got Bledsoe, which looked like a good move on paper. He's a solid defender. Yeah, but and he's had a decent season. Whether he works with a ball dominant Giannis is yet to. Yet to be known. Brandon Jennings yeah, is an interesting say, one. Near triple double oh, in his return. I love Brandon Jennings. But <laughs> since then, his last two games, he had four points. Yeah. So, <laughs> bit of a fall from grace. And we know Malcolm Brogdon is still out. He's hoping to make a return around the start of playoffs or during the playoffs. He's been good. But rookie of the year last year was probably a little bit of a Bradbury behind Embiid. So, I think that title's a little bit overrated. And then Tony Snell... Again, disappointing. He started in 50 of the 62 games this season, but just 7.2 points per game from his 28 minutes. He does shoot over 40% from three, but... Yeah, I don't rate him that high. No, I just he's just a role player. And then we get to the big question mark, which is Jabari Parker. Mm. Now, this guy was a number two pick in the draft. I mean, we know the two ACL injuries. We know that... He's capable. I mean, through his 20 games, his 50 games last season, he averaged 20 points per game. His yep. talent is not in question. It's is he able to consistently do it and avoid injury? That's the big question. And from what it looks like, the Bucks are not willing to bet on him because he's a, he's a restricted free agent at the end of the season. And from all reports, he's not going to be with the Bucks. I mean, you've done yeah, well, yeah. I, yeah, I just don't see where he fits if they're going to keep. Middleton and Giannis, yeah. like where does he fit? And like if they're going to match an offer from a, a team that's probably tanking who are going to throw some money exactly. at him. Yeah, exactly. Are they going to throw that money or give that money 
to Jabari, but then play him off the bench. Yeah. It just it, it doesn't make sense for the Bucks to re-sign him at the end of the season, and it's it's really through no fault of their own. It's just he just doesn't fit with yeah. how they're trying to build, and he just doesn't have that value through the injuries. You just mm. can't. Well, that's the thing. Him. I mean, he's going to be wanting if at least if I was him, I would want like a five year deal. Yeah, because you just need that security with his injuries. Long-term. Like he's not the kind of player who's going to be like, oh yeah, I'll sign a one year deal and yeah. then. Hopefully my stock goes up because with that injury history, you just want to get paid yeah. and get some long-term financial security. He'll find a suitor, I think. Yeah, he will. He just I just don't think it'll be the Bucks, which... Unfortunate. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of those guys we talked about are in the starting unit and that has been a big issue for them. I mean, their struggles in the first quarter. So just over their last 10 games... They've given, this is in first quarters, they've given a 36 to 20 head start to Orlando. They've given a 31 to 26 head start to the Hawks, which doesn't seem like much, but it's the Hawks. They've given a 43 to 31 head start to the 76ers. They've given a 40 to 22 head start to the Wizards. That's just in their last 10 games. And I know there was a recent press conference where Jason Terry kind of called out the starters that they actually need to start representing the jersey a bit better, which... Probably Jason Terry's the only buck who could get away with that. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, the evidence is there that these starters outside of Giannis are really struggling, mm. which gets to the big picture question of forget this season. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Bucks are entering the Anthony Davis zone with Giannis a lot quicker than expected. I mean, he's not a free agent until 2021, but... But he's like you can see the potential yes. and the ceiling, and, and they the need to show around. him yep. why he should stay because it's not a huge market team. Yeah. Like there are going to be big offers from big market teams who are very appealing, and if he doesn't have a team that he believes can genuinely win, then I don't oh, think bother. many people will blame him if he skips town. Yeah. But the question that I want to ask is. It's a difficult one because we just don't know yet. I don't, at least, I don't think the best way to build around these unicorns. I mean, if you look at it, so we've got Anthony Davis, for example. Yeah. New Orleans still hasn't figured out what's the best fit. Yeah. I don't think Demarcus is. It's clearly not going to make them a contender. They haven't figured that out. The Knicks haven't figured out with Paul Zingas yet. The Knicks what the best fit is. Out. Yeah, well, they may never figure out anything exactly. exactly. But even Jokic, I don't think Malone's figured it out yet. We talked about it last week. Still all very young. They are still all very young. Yeah, um, probably the the elder statesman of them. But now we've got Giannis. And, I mean, the common school of thought and the traditional school of thought has been to surround them with shooters and just give them floor spacing and someone to kick to. But I think with Giannis in particular... It then opens up the question of the Bucks' biggest problem. How do you defend? Because as good as Giannis is, he's probably a team where he plays the five and you've got all shooters around him is really going to struggle, which we've seen. They were the worst in, de- worst in rebounding in the league. They allow the fifth most points in the paint and they struggle defending the three ball. So you need someone who can protect the paint. But then on the other end of the floor that doesn't work with your traditional big man because they just get in his way. Yeah. So it's a really complicated question of how do you build around a talent like Giannis? I don't know if there's an answer, yeah. there, but that's... I said, we've seen... The, well, and you say that, like, you'd think DeMarcus Cousins would be the answer to Giannis's well, issue. Like, he's a mobile big yeah. man, right? Like, he can stretch the floor. You think it would work, but then you see the you see New Orleans Davis. situation and it just hasn't panned yeah. out, whether I it's just, still on the way. It's, it's a bit of a rhetorical question right now because we don't know the answer. They yeah. don't know the answer. Those four haven't figured it out yet. And but, maybe the first team that can, the first head yeah. coach, could put a team together, Yeah, you know, they might be the next unstoppable thing. But it's also, if you just look at it, so how would Giannis work in Houston's system? Because that would be the shooter's model. Yeah. Take out Capella and replace him with Giannis. How would that work? Well, see, I think if you if you take out Capella out of that Houston team, they're not the sa- same. They're, they're not the yeah. same defensively, and Giannis won't have the same effect yeah. defensively. So I think you almost need a, a center just because Giannis isn't going to have yeah. is, isn't going to be able to have the impact offensively and defensively for however many minutes, 38 minutes, 36 minutes, whatever he's playing yeah. throughout a game for a whole season. They really need a guy who can 
block shots and shoot threes at the center position, which is a very rare combination it's a bit in yeah. today's game. Yeah. I mean, there's not many guys who can do that. It's why Embiid is so valuable. Once again, it's it why like Cousins. Portland is so high yeah. on that Zach Collins, yeah. like these kind yeah. of guys who can block shots, seven footers, block shots, shoot threes. DeAndre Ayton, even to an extent, talking about the ones coming through, yeah. although his three ball range is questionable. But in terms of those guys are just so rare, and that's what that's in my opinion the perfect pairing with these. But at the same time, Boogie is that to an extent, but we're yet to see it work with the AD. I th- this is a, a way out there yep. thought, but would because it would never happen. Would Giannis and Anthony Davis work together? Jeez, that'd Ooh. be fun. You can play. I mean, Davis would have to play at the five, and Giannis would play at the four. I think that would suit. I think I'd, Anthony yeah. Davis would suit Giannis better, but I'm not sure whether Giannis, Giannis would suit would Anthony suit Davis. A. A. So, I mean, they're both ball dom. It would be hard, mm, but it yeah. could. That's the thing with all of these. It's just like I don't know. Will yeah. it or won't it? And that's the question. But I mean, it is the question for the Bucks and. We don't know who their next coach is going to be. I doubt it's going to be Prunty. I'd say they are going to appoint someone yeah, at the yeah. end of the season. The thing is, though, they've got a great opportunity. They can essentially go out and go, hey, we've got Giannis. We've got Giannis. Yeah, this is a great opportunity yeah. for any head coach. Yep. I mean, they're going to have some suitors, and this is probably the next couple of years for the Bucks. They're going to have to make some of the biggest decisions yeah. of their franchise in recent times. This is the biggest one. Head coach, yeah. this is where it all starts. Got to sell to Giannis that there's a future. Otherwise, yeah. Giannis might not be in a Bucks uniform for too much longer. 